Hello everyone, welcome to my brand new Let's Play series of the Age of Decadence. This is Colonel RPG and I'm so happy to have you here hanging out with me for this very promising, very independent, very old school, brand new RPG by Iron Tower Studio. This game has the longest development I can remember off the top of my head. It's actually been in development since March 2004. That's 11 and a half years of development, so yeah. The Age of Decadence is very much born out of love and passion for RPGs and a team led by V Dweller, his name is not publicly known for now. Uh, he, well, they have been through a whole lot since, uh, since then, since back then. I've actually accompanied the development of the game ever since they still had a 2D engine and then uh, they released a couple of uh, demos and videos and all that, but for over the this last decade, man, I've just, I've just been waiting for this moment. The first time I get to play, well, I, I, I got a taste of it before I, I actually built a few characters, but didn't get too far into the game. So, what is this game all about? What is the Age of Decadence all about? So, it's about a bleak, dying world and the struggles of the people in it. It's slow fantasy, post-apocalyptic and Roman-inspired all in one package, so it promises a fresh and original setting for us to explore, with, I expect, some very hard and cruel lessons to be learned in the meantime. Now, I do warn you. This is one of those RPGs where your choices matter a lot, so we're never gonna be able to see and explore everything in one playthrough. So if you like this game, and I hope you do, check the link in the description below because this Let's Play is gonna cover just one of the many different ways you can go about playing The Age of Decadence. So with that in mind, let's start this thing. I will start a new game, I'll create a new character. Uh, yeah, The Age of Decadence is a very different game from what you're used to. Uh, I will just get to show you that later on. For now, let's start a character. So, uh, you can see over here we have four different back- uh, so sorry, eight different backgrounds. Actually seven because, uh, Drifter over here is not actually a background. But each one of these, they give you different faction reputations. There are seven factions in the game, each of them with their own storyline, I believe. And, uh, of course with their advantages and disadvantages, as in case you are uh, on good terms or not with them. So you got an assassin, you can read the description. The descriptions in the character creation are actually pretty cool, I will show you later. Uh, some of them are very, very funny. Um, so the assassins, they are uh, um, in line with the uh, boatmen of Styx, and there's the description below. We got thieves, we got a praetor, which is basically a noble, yeah, pretty much. Uh, he's in good terms with House Daratan, which I believe once the largest and most influential noble of the noble houses, controlling seven provinces and more than 20 legions, House Daratan has almost been destroyed during the war. Today, less than 100 people still loyal to Daratan name control a small town named Terran. Terran is actually where we start the game, so that makes sense that our Praetor over here would be um, from House Daratan. Apparently, uh, House Aurelian don't really like them. Uh, so we got a lore master. Which is basically a lore master is basically not exactly an archaeologist, uh, an archaeologist. That's an historian and a, basically a scholar. Uh, we got a grifter over here, which is basically a thief without affiliation, and a drifter without any background. We got a mercenary, which is basically a guy that was well, a sword for hire, right? And a merchant, uh, which is uh, I believe the most dialogue-heavy playthrough you can get. So. It's very important to play to our role right here. I'm gonna choose a lore master because that way I'm gonna get to experience the world and its origins, or rather, the origins of the apocalypse uh, with, that has happened in the past in the world of the Age of Decadence. So, yeah, this the lore master is gonna be able to know artifacts and know history and all about that. So I'm gonna go with that for right now. Let's see. I got a skin tone. I will go with. Let's go with a little bit of a darker tone right here. Uh, I got a face, let's see, mm, somebody with a, bird, a beard maybe, I got a moustache maybe, I don't know, let's see, uh, uh, yeah, that's cool, uh, the hair, it doesn't really matter, it's basically cosmetic, doesn't, ooh, I like that one, I like that one, it's nice and Roman inspired, I mean, <laughs> balding isn't really, uh, isn't really a uh, sort of classical, uh, I don't know, hairdo, or whatever, but just, how it is. Oh, I got to choose my, choose my beard over here. Let's go with... Oh, I like that one. Let's go with that. Why the hell not? Looks regally. Regal. Regal. Regal? Regal. Yeah, color. Color of the bur beard. I keep saying bird instead of beard. I don't know. Let's go next. 
And now, for the nitty and gritty of it all. This is where we're gonna choose our skills and our attributes. So basically there are six attributes, strengths, dexterity, constitution, perception, intelligence, and charisma. This basically is very much inspired, <clears throat> at least I think so, it's very much inspired by Fallout and, and this special system, except this time it's there's no luck. So basically uh, Vince decided, Vince or V Dweller, the, the designer of the game, uh, decided that luck wasn't really important. And I actually remember a uh, discussion back in, in the old forums uh, about uh, the inclusion of luck in the character system. And we have combat skills and civil skills. So I have my build right here. We have a name. Let me... Can I name... Sorry? Hmm? Wait. What? Where do I name my character? I want to name my... Oh, there it is. Sorry. Sorry. My name... My character is gonna be Kato. Or Kato. Kato? Maybe in, in, in Latin. Uh, Kato means... Uh, the wise one, I believe. I think it is. The wise one or wise. Just knowledgeable. So for a lore master... I think that is pretty fitting. So we're gonna be a lore master. I'm gonna go with four strength. In this game, basically, you have from uh, four to ten in each of the or my, my or your uh, main um, stats. But it is not advisable to go with either one. So you shouldn't go with four and you shouldn't go with ten because you're gonna be very disadvantaged uh, in relation to. Uh, you know, more of a middle ground in each one of these. Unfortunately for me, and fortunately for you, hopefully, I'm kind of an idiot. So I'm gonna go with four strength. He's not gonna like fighting. No, sir. And he's gonna go with five dexterity, which is terrible. And he's gonna go with six constitution to try and make up some for his shortcomings in, in, the, in battle. Uh, and I'm gonna go with eight perception. Eight, perception is, as you can read down here, as I hover perception. Can I click it and... We'll keep. No, we won't. Uh, so basically, perception influences uh, non-combat skills and some modifiers during. Uh, so basically, during skill checks. So it's important for you to be perceptive of your surroundings, uh, for you to be able to do well in conversations and uh, just general text adventures in the game. Intelligence is also very, very important for that. So I'm gonna go with ten. Yeah. It should <laughs> so basically, we have no strength and are very intelligent. Well, I hope this is going to be an interesting playthrough. I really, really do. And Charisma is basically an, well, an yet another one of those non-combat stats. So, as you can see, we're very, very civil-oriented or civil-skill-oriented. So, we're going to have 65 skill points to allocate uh, in our civil skills and only 15 for our combat. So I'm gonna go with three dagger. In this game, I also, by the way, you should specialize. A jack of all trades is gonna have a very hard time doing most of the stuff, uh, at least most of the later game stuff. Um, so you should specialize. You shouldn't try to see everything in one playthrough. You really should try and specialize and then play the game again and again and again, because believe it or not, well, I actually don't believe it, well, I believe it because it's been said by the creators of the game, but this game has 510,000 words written for it. That's like, that's like three books of the uh, A Song of Ice and Fire series. That's like three Lord of the Rings or more, maybe, I don't know. The Lord of the Rings, I think it had like 120. 1,000 words? I don't know. This game is very, very dialogue-heavy, and you'll get to see that I will be speaking and reading all over the place. Combat is really not a main focus, and when it is, you really need to be ready, because it is deadly, it is very, very dangerous. Um, it, but, of course, if you are a very good warrior, then you didn't fear, unless you're fighting, like, some supernatural thing or whatever. Uh, well, I guess that is a possibility. I guess that is a possibility. There is magic in the world, although it's very low magic in, in, uh, in that. So, that, as you can see, we have uh, our main weapon skills and we have our defense skills. Basically, block or dodge, you need to pick one, not one or the other, not both, because they don't work together. Uh, and critical strike is, as you can see right there, it is basically for the uh, critical strikes, your critical chance. Now, as you can see, look, for example, the descriptions. Descriptions are pretty cool, let's see. Skill level, unskilled, put it down before you poke an eye out. Level two, You've learned to look menacing while holding a dagger. All you need is a good scowl. Level 3. You are discovered that swinging your dagger widely will only get you so far. So we're getting a little better. But some of them are very, very funny. I don't remember off the top of my head which ones they are. But I think, I was like, uh, I don't know. You used a rusty, a rusty nail to break into a barn once. True story. Yeah. <laughs> That's for lockpicking. But some of these are pretty cool. Unfortunately, I'm not finding the one 
uh, that I, I found particularly funny. It's like level 5 of some of these. I don't know. Anyway, you guys explore, you guys spend time with the game. If you're gonna get the game for yourself, if not, uh, well, you're gonna have to make do what I, I show you or other YouTubers show you in their own Let's Plays. So, my civil skills. I'm gonna get Persuasion. I'm gonna get uh, four of that, and, f and lore, five of that, and that is all. That is your character creation. Let's accept. Now, there's a loading screen, I don't know, actually, hmm, game? There we go. Uh, there's gonna be a loading screen, a little bit of an introduction to the world, and I'm gonna read it out loud, but it's gonna disappear pretty quickly. Actually, wait, is that a cutscene? Oh, there is. That is actually better. Yeah, I read. Yeah, so the world and an empire that once ruled it lie in ruins. Noble houses that lorded over provinces and commanded vast armies have been reduced to broken city states. The Imperial Guard, remnants of the empire, Imperial Army, acts as a deterrent to open warfare. The knowledge of the old ways has been all but forgotten. Hucksters peddle ancient wares of no value to the ignorant, and the lords seek and hoard artifacts they barely understand. The fanatical mysticism is slowly gaining favor and long-held resentments are rising to the surface. Some speculate that another war approaches. Others actively encourage it. Times like these bring nothing but suffering for the common man. However, they offer a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to those determined to seize the moment and follow it to riches, power, glory, and often an untimely death. Your adventure starts in Tyran, a small crumbling town far away from the main tracks of travelers and caravans. It's been dying for the last hundred years or so, kept alive only by the combined efforts of its inhabitants. Broken stone work has been replaced by makeshift wooden construction, creating the impression that a new town is slowly emerging from the ruins of the old one. Much like Tyran, the noble house controlling the town has, been spe has seen better days. Before the war, that toppled the empire and the devastation that ensued, House Daratan was one of the most powerful houses, but that was then and times have changed. Today, it barely has enough strength to maintain its hold over the local guilds. As a child, you love listening to stories about the old days, filled with gods fighting alongside man, power-wielding magi, magi, more demigods than human and monsters conjured by the cowardly Cantari. So when an opportunity presented itself, you signed up as an apprentice to a local lore master named Feng. Lore masters have always been in demand. While the future offers little, the past is rich and ripe for the taking. That's very true. You just need to know where to dig and what to do with it. And that's where lore masters came in. To master their craft, they dug through ruins, copied ancient manuscripts often without understanding them, traded bits and pieces of pre-war knowledge, and appraised anything that looked old. While the magi are long gone, the machines they built still remain, and the lore masters are the only ones who may have the knowledge to bring them back. Come here, apprentice. That's... yeah, that's Mr. Fang. Well, I'm not gonna go there right now, I'm gonna show you guys at home how the game controls. So, it's very simple, it's very traditional, top-down, 3D, point-and-click stuff. You have a chest over here. This linen chest is old and broken in some places. It's unlocked and predictably contains nothing of interest. But there is something of interest in here. We got a map, a pile of assorted junk and various uselessness. I do remember there being, any, there being something of interest in here. There's a table over here. A small wooden box used to, as a bedside table. There is nothing of interest there. But over here, is it over here? Feng's desk, notes, candles, writing materials. It appears that Feng is interested in General Marcellus Galbo, a famous military tactician and strategist of the old empire. Mm, there is something here for us. Let's see. Got yeah, documents. It's a large, carefully restored document tracing the history of House Daratan throughout centuries. Turns out the house owes its name to the Battle of Daratan, where a certain legatus managed... Let's see, let's read down here. Where a certain legatus managed to defeat an army of 20,000 men with less than a full legion. The scroll doesn't contain anything and you don't uh, that you don't already know, but you managed to gain a few bits and pieces of knowledge. Hmm. It's a large, carefully restored document tracing the history of House Daratan. Yeah, that's the same thing. So... Previously, wait, let me see. Previously, it gave me skill points to look at that. I don't know if it was just 
Oh, he did. There we go. Yeah, he did. So he gave us 10 skill points. It doesn't say it back here. Oh, he does. Look at that. You gain a new insight into the liberal arts and trades. And we got 10 skill... Yeah, that's how... This is how we level up in the game. You gain skill points. Yeah, I know, I know, Mr. Fang. Are you... Okay with me talking? Fang came to Terran with a caravan two decades ago. Nobody knew where he came from or why, but he had the bitterness of a man soured by the memory of the life he lost. He was well versed in languages and antiquities, but the town already had a lore master. Fortunately for Fang, the lore master fell sick and passed away, despite the best efforts of the local alchemist who was quite puzzled by the symptoms. Fang became the new lore master and even earned the favor of Lord Antidas after discovering several Daraton relics. Hi Fang. Did you finish translating that scroll? Never mind, I have a better job for you. Someone at the inn has a trinket that they want me to look at. Why don't you handle it? Just remember that I, what I thought you, take, uh, taught you. Take a good look, show some excitement, then tell them it's a very valuable artifact that's worth a lot to the right collector, and that they were right to bring it to us to learn its true value. Wait for the work to sink in words to sink in, and then ask for 100 Imperials to research, research it further. So, what if it is actually a valuable artifact? Artifacts? I've been stuck in this shithole you call a town for the last 20 years. Year after year, farmers and diggers bring me everything they find, hoping for a lucky break. They bring me bracelets, cheap pottery, rusty old locks, pipes, chamber pots, even deformed skulls. The sad truth is that this town doesn't have anything of value, which is probably the only reason why Antidas is still in charge. So, why did you stay then? Weren't you listening? Every year presents brings me junk to appraise. Good business. Yeah, so you said he had a trinket. I think the word map was mentioned. Go and take a look. If it's something good, bring it to me. I will go there right away, master. The inn is full of guests. After spending weeks and sometimes months on the road, they have an unhealthy appetite for cheap wine, stuffed cooked meals and women willing to share their beds for a few coins. You navigate through the busy crowd and go upstairs. The trader's room is easy to find. Are you the lore master I sent for? Asks Gracius, letting you in. Uh, yeah, I'm, Ma I'm Kato, Master Feng's apprentice. Should my master's attention be required, I'll send for him. Where is the artifact? Right here, Gracious hands you the scroll. You open the scroll carefully and study it for a few minutes. It looks like an ordinary map depicting a temple. There is an old seal at the bottom. The name on the seal is Thor Agoth. Hmm. Well, this is a very valuable artifact that's worth a lot to the right collector. You were wise to bring it to us to learn its true value. And what might th this true value be? be? Gracious tries to sound indifferent, but it's obvious that Feng's simple formula worked its magic. Well, for someone who's interested in High Lord's artifacts, it could be worth thousands. I'll, I'll be, I'll have to study the map further, of course, to determine its history and value. Please forgive this uneducated trader, Masakato, uh, Kato, but uh, who are the High Lords? I, I will be presenting this map to Lord Antidas tomorrow, and I'd like to impress his lordship with some bits of knowledge. Well, according to the legends, the High Lords were our allies in the war between our glorious empire and the ruthless Kantari. While their nature is debatable, most lower masters agree that it was definitely supernatural. This map bears the seal of Thor Agoth, or Tar Thor Agoth, as he was also known. And there we go, our lord is working its magic. Thor Agoth's title was the Artificer. He built machines, many machines, but most were destroyed during the war or lost after. There are many people who hope that some catches uh, have survived and can be recovered. They collect and studied Thor Agoth's documents, looking for clues. That's why we want to be absolutely certain that the seal that the map has so valuable isn't a fake. It might be very embarrassing for you otherwise. Unless, of course, you insist that... Oh, of course not, Master! Please take the map and study it properly. And the money? I'm sure you know what the standard research fee is. Gracious gives you a small purse without any enthusiasm. You're about to leave when you notice Gracious hesitation. There is something else I'd like you to look at. You seem very knowledgeable. He pauses and reaches inside his sash. I found it where I found the map. He gives you a small object. It's a metal sphere with grooves on its surface. Well, I don't know what it is. I'm not even sure it's an artifact. I'll show it to Master Fang and let you know what he thinks. And let's return to Master Fang. You're about to leave when the innkeeper stops you. Another, um, guest is in need of your services, Master. He's a prospector. Would you be kind enough to take a look? Uh... Uh, well, sure. 
The innkeeper spends one, sends one of the slaves to get the prospector. It's a man with sun-darkened skin, unkempt hair, and a heavy beard. His faded, worn-out clothes are still covered with road dust. He opens his bag, takes out, a, takes out a dozen of carefully wrapped items of various sizes, and slowly removes the dirty rags protecting them. He browses through his treasures. Gears, pottery, half burned scrolls with faded, no longer decipherable letters, Glass jars with strange liquids. Anything you want to buy? Asks the prospector anxiously. I'm embarrassed to admit, but I find myself without sufficient funds to pay for a comfortable stay. Although I'm sure that some of these artifacts are bound to fetch a high price. I mean, just look at this beauty. He picks up a rusted cylinder with spiral groove. The very definition of a mysterious device. This guy is very knowledge, very knowledgeable. <laughs> From a wondrous artifact, no doubt. What do you think, Lord Master? Well, it's called a worm, and it's missing a gear that goes with it. It was a common device. Oh. Ugh. The skull of a manji! How about this? The power still burns through him, much like it did when he was alive, walking the earth and battling demons. When nights are dark, it glows softly, keeping the demons at bay. Well, it does have the magic, but it's dangerous and will kill you if you keep it. Stay away from anything that glows in the dark. Okay, that's... that's... I should write that down. <laughs> Why? Well, the old magic is like fire. Fire can keep you warm, cook your food, and help you forge weapons and tools, but it can also burn down your house or a forest, the moment you lose control, which we don't have to begin with, not anymore. Oh, I have a special charm that keeps me safe! The prospector shows you a strange amulet, his face lit in eagerness and greed. Let's have, let's take a look. You turn it over in your hands, thoughtfully. Adorned with beads and engraved with runes, it appears to be a ceremonial bowl of some sort. Strangely warped, but uh, that isn't unusual for artifacts of the old empire. Who knows what arcane fo forces had been unleashed on it? Two, smalls metal two small metal drums are affixed to the underside, two awkwardly angled to be supports for the bowl. You wrap one with a knuckle and listen. Hollow. Reservoirs, perhaps. Containers of sacred liquid for, th liquid for the bowl? You are unsure, but you keep your ex expression carefully neutral. It wouldn't do for the punters to see one's, your uncertainty. I'm professional. Uh, let's see. Streetwise, I'm not skilled in that, so that's probably a bad choice. So how much do you want for it? 500! And you should consider yourself lucky that I'm willing to sell it. The very fact that I'm standing here before you should attest to the quality of this charm. Uh, uh yeah, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna su succeed in this. Nobody in this town will pay 500 for it, so you can either starve to death or sell it to me for 300. And you should consider yourself lucky that I'm willing to buy it. The jewels alone are worth at least 300. There's no way I'm letting it go for less than 500. Well, I'll think about it. Yep. Yeah. You don't have the money, don't you? Asks the innkeeper, watching the exchange with interest. The only reason I'm letting him stay on credit is because you promised to buy that junk. Better see some money soon or I'm kicking him out. Well, that's not my problem. How did it go? It went well. I got a map, a sphere, and 100 Imperials. Let's hand everything to him. A map and a sphere. Oh, what a glorious day! Feng looks at the map. Oh, the seal looks real. I'll take a better look tonight and let you know in the morning. As for the sphere, it's just a bead of some for some necklace. He counts 50 Imperials and gives them to you along with the sphere. Cool. So he gave us money. Thank you, Master. Let's rest for the night. The map is ordinary. Oh, is this the next day? Hmm. The map is ordinary. No X marks the spot there. The seal is interesting and well preserved, but it's worth no more than a hundred Imperials. Maybe Antidas will buy it. Go see him when you have a chance. He gives you the map. Wait, buy it? What about the traitor, Gracious? Oh, almost forgot. He's dead. So you can keep the map. Apparently he wasn't welcome in this town. And with the Assassin's Guild almost out of work, hmm, I'm surprised he made it as far as in as the inn. So Okay, so somebody is, was out to get him. Huh. Is there anything else you want me to do, Master? Feng gives you an appraising look. As a matter of fact... Well, you see, Kato... Kato? I keep saying Kato. I should say Kato. Let's go with Kato. Uh, you see, Kato, being a lore master isn't, isn't just about dealing with rarities. Knowing how to deal with people is equally important. I believe I've neglected this part of the education, but fortunately, it should be easy to fix. Lord Anidas has invited another lore master to Terran. Needless to say, I don't share his opinion that two heads are better than one, and I'll be very grateful if you can find a way to get rid of the new lore master. You'll secure your future and learn a valuable lesson at the same time. His name is Cassius. He's probably at the inn already, so don't waste any time. Secure my future, huh? 
You don't think the new Lord Master would need your services and look after you the way I do, do you? Don't be foolish. Uh, are you asking me to kill him? Do I detect some qualms? You have so much to learn, Kato. When you have a thorn in your side, do you not remove it? Ah, perhaps you think that the man isn't the man isn't a thorn. That a man's un, a man's life, unlike that of an insect, has some value. No, it doesn't. Truly, I should be charging you for these lessons. The, take this dagger, Kato, and go. Prove that my faith in you has a mis was misplaced. Okay. So apparently we're on an assassination mission. That's kind of brutal, but then again, Mr. Fang over here got into town a little bit uh, strangely, all, all things considered. Apparently, the uh, previous lore master did, wasn't long for this world. Okay, so he has a guard. He has something up here. Why can't I go up there? Okay, well, this is as far as my experience with the game gets me, because I have never get past this point. So from now on, this is a completely blind playthrough. And uh, speaking of which, let me save the game. So, uh, what is the... let's see... Uh, what's the... Oh, there it is. F5 is the key to quick save. Those vines look great for climbing. Do they? Where are the... Dexterity? Nah, that's not gonna work. That is never gonna work, of course. Dexterity failure, you fail to climb the vines. Oh, the vines, of course. Yeah. See, this is one of the reasons why you should specialize, because there's so many, uh, so many options, so many ways to do quests, that, ooh, you hear the blacksmith hammering something on the anvil way before you reach the smithy. A sign in front of it says, Affordable cold iron weapons. Real steel dug up from the old battlement, battlefields. You got a slave over here, can I chat with you? Hi. This is the trading... What? This is the trading plaza, dominated by merchant skills building. The criers earn their money by yelling, Best goods, best deals, no offer refused. Really? No offer? Hmm, I'm gonna check that later. Let's check it with a blacksmith. Hi! What can I do for you, friend? Well, I'm looking, I'm looking for good weapons and armor. Any advice? Good? Good is a very subjective word, my friend. What's good for one fighter may get another killed. Look at this two-handed scimitar, for example. It's an impressive weapon, the undisputed king of swords. Its striking power is unmatched, but it comes at a price not everyone is willing to pay. It's too slow. Now, this gladius is a much lighter weapon. Its advantage isn't the power, but speed. Same goes for armor. Nothing beats heavy armor when it comes to protecting you in battle. But don't expect to be able to move very fast if you're wrapped up in sheets of metal. Take a look at my wares and see if you can find something that fits your fighting style. Okay, so... Let's see what he has. So, the last time I tried the game, which was like a few weeks ago, there were some items that didn't have items. But now the game is complete. Now everything is ready. And uh, Oscar, the um, the artist, main artist for the game, has been at hard at work creating all of this. And they look, most of them look very cool. Some of them are a little bit weird to understand. Because, for example, some, like, this is, a, this is a carta. So you see the lore in this game, like Handox over here. I think Handox means... I think this is a Greek or the Scanian throwing axe designed for speed. It doesn't say, but I think this is a Greek inspired, ancient Greece inspired um, weapon. But yeah, they've got a lot of stuff. I'm not gonna buy anything because I don't really have the money right now. I'm gonna look at my inventory though, see what I can uh, guess from here. So we have basically no armor, our defense rating or damage resistance, DR, is that DR, damage resistance? I think it is. Um, is basically. Nothing. Anyway, we got a 6 to 9 over here, 3 to 6, AP is a little bit... Uh, I think this is actually... Can I go two-handed? Is that good for me? Let's see. Huh. So how does that work? Okay, so... Okay. Yeah, the problem is I only have 7 action points, so I will probably want to go there. Let's put this in my belt bag just in case. And we got this. Also, I got a shield. Can I go with the shield? I think I can. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. We're all good. We're all good. This game also has an alchemy system and a crafting system. But I'm, I don't think I'm, we're going to get to see that in this playthrough. Because you need to be skilled at those in order to use them. I mean, I could find some uh, skill points to spend in those and craft some barely workable things. We got a dwelling over here. What's over here? A front door eaten nearly through by dry rot can barely conceal the bare and musty interior. There's clearly nothing of, to gain from invading what little privacy the inhabitants have left. Man. Yeah, these are ruins. These are basically ruins. What is, what was, what is left of an ancient empire? And I think with that, 
I am gonna end the first episode of the Age of Decadence. We got some mercenary over here. We'll check that later. Le next episode. For now, I'm Colonel RPG, and this has been the Age of Decadence. I really hope you've enjoyed it. And if you did, go ahead and leave a comment, like the video, subscribe to my channel for lots of RPG goodness and other games that I play as well. But above all, about everything else, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next episode. Bye-bye!